guys, I'm Captain Phil with Slip Rock Charters. I'm here to show you guys some tips and tricks to catch a triple tail anywhere you are. Let's have a look. So we're out here today in Charlotte Harbor using shrimp to catch a triple tail no more than 300 yards from the beach. Let's show you how it's done. And this is how you catch big triple tail in Charlotte Harbor. Real simple rig, just a split shot, shrimp, hook through the head. We have a really windy day today, so it's tough to get it down. Uh, triple tailer kind of deep, but you can pretty much pull up to almost any piling and uh, cast down, cast down, let it drift back. Hopefully we'll hook something up, we'll see what happens. All right guys, so a little couple tips here to uh, rigging and catching triple tail. Um, it works with a lot of other species too, but primarily this is what I was using. Uh, we use the medium action 7 foot St. Croix Avid Inshore Rod. It's paired with a Stratic uh, 3000 series reel 30 pound Power Pro. Um, we started off with only 20 pound test for our leader. We did increase all the way up to 40. Uh, typically 30 is more than enough, but we did get a few break offs, so I decided to go heavier, uh, especially in Charlotte Harbor. Uh, the water quality, the water clarity is a little low, so one of the thicker lime wouldn't necessarily hurt. Uh, but I do use the fluorocarbon leader. Um, I'll show you guys a loop knot in another video. And typically, there's a split shot, maybe six to ten inches uh, above the hook. And I do prefer to use small hooks. This is a one knot circle. Sometimes I'll even go down to a one knot J uh, or something pretty small. Uh, it just hides it a little bit better. Um, when rigging that shrimp. I did hook the shrimp straight um, in the head, behind the eyes, in front of the brain, under the horn is my preferred method of hooking shrimp. Um, although sometimes I have shrimp uh, switched over to tail hooking depending on the bite. Uh, typically that position in the head works out very well. Um, so that's your basic rig for catching those triple tail. Um, and it, it, it should definitely work not only on them, but any other species, especially when you're throwing up close to the mangroves. Uh, there are times that I won't use a weight at all. You can get rid of that split shot and just free line it. It does work out very effectively if there's no wind, but if you have wind or higher current, you need to get that shrimp to kind of stay on that drift line. A little bit of split shot's the best way to go. All right, so the knot I like to use is a traditional loop knot. And the best way to tie this is to take your leader, give yourself simple overhand. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tag in there. Bring that down. Using a one-knot circle, go through the circle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come the opposite side where this one came out underneath then. And as you come up here, you want to go ahead and tie another overhand up here. And we'll go ahead and pull that one tight. Doesn't need to be really tight, but tight enough. Come over here. We can pull this tight now. And then as we pull these two together, the knot will cinch down like that. I usually use my teeth and I grab that tag in with my teeth as I tighten it. Um, but you end up with very effective loop knot um, that's what we were using on those triple tail the other day and i use this knot exclusively on all my fishing so you can go ahead and snip that tag in pretty close i'll come in about right there and that's that perfect little loop knot now locating triple tail can be and is the biggest challenge to finding them uh, traditionally, I go out in the Gulf and I'll run buoys, you know, I'll run my boat at 35, 40 miles an hour running past buoys within, you know, six, seven feet of the boat and I'll be staring down into the water looking for these triple tail. Um, the coast of 580G sunglasses are probably some of the best weapons that I have out there to see them. I can see straight through the water with 
in unbelievable clarity. Um, and while we're running those buoys, I can spot them and I'll spin the boat right around, turn the engine off, drop the trolling motor in and kind of creep back up towards that fish. You will scare it off, but I'd say 90% of the time that fish will swim straight down on that buoy marker, down on that rope, and it'll come right back up no more than 30 seconds later. So it's definitely uh, my biggest tip right there to finding them is just to run buoys. Now, on, on, the, on the flip side of that coin, if you're fishing in the harbor or somewhere inshore and you want to find them, uh, it can be a little bit more challenging, but the best way to do it is to just go check either the crab buoys or the markers. You get channel markers and you have the no wake zone markers uh, with the pylons there. Those are also great spots, not only for bait, but also for triple tail, um, because what they do is they like to feed on the crustaceans that are on those pylons, so, or the buoys. And the idea behind that is to find the oldest buoy or the older pylons that have significant growth on them because a lot of crustaceans will hang out in that growth. That's what the triple tail are looking for and that's why they always take shrimp. Um, I'd say shrimp is probably the number one bait for them. I don't have any issues catching them with shrimp. I think every single time I've seen a triple tail and thrown at it, they pretty much will come after a shrimp. Um, it's kind of a guarantee. Uh, so finding can be a little difficult, but go ahead and pull up on some buoys or different markers. Drop that split shot rig out if you got a little wind, and uh, you should be good to go. They'll come right off that marker and hit it. Sometimes you got to let it drop down to the bottom, though, if you have a significant uh, wind or current. The day we were out there, as you see in the video, there was a lot of wind. Uh, so what we did, you can use two different methods. If you have a trolling motor with spot lock, it's by far the best way to go. That trolling motor can put you on the, uh, the leeward side. You don't want to be ahead of it because they're going to tangle you up. You want to be behind that marker, that buoy, and you want to throw up to it and let that shrimp drift back straight towards it. Triple tail will come off and hit it. Now, if you get a bigger triple tail, it's 20 inches plus, they fight like crazy. And what you want to do is you want to be able to turn that spot lock off on that trolling motor so that you can naturally drift the boat away from that marker. And while you're doing that, you're going to pull the triple tail away as well. That's the best way to prevent getting snagged and broken off by these things because they will swim straight down to the bottom and wrap you up. Um, and if you don't, then I'd recommend, if you don't have the spot lock and the you know trolling motor, you can drift fish past some of these buoys and you can still be extremely successful. Just let the boat drift. Uh, after you get away, if you get a bigger one that's at 24, 25 inch range, they definitely will take you a couple minutes to get to the boat. Have a landing net available. Uh, it's super important to get those fish in the boat. That way you won't be able to have to lift them up with um, your line or anything of that nature. This time of year in Charlotte Harbor, the crabbers will move their traps kind of on the upper bay area. If you go up the uh, Peace River, a uh, little bit north of 41, south of 75, you will find a ton of crab markers, crab buoys. That's, that's typically the best spot to start is somewhere around there. Uh, you'll even be lucky enough to find some triple tail up in canals a lot of times. Uh, I've heard reports of crabbers bringing their pots right up into the canals. 
uh, because there are plenty of blue crabs in there. And being tarpon season, those crabbers want to put as many crabs in the boat as they can. They can sell them, you know, make some money off of them. People like us can use them to catch fish. Uh, but those crab buoys are a triple tail attractant, and that's what they love to sit on. And they will sit on the opposite side the wind's blowing or currents blowing on that on that crab buoy and a lot of times if you get close enough to it you'll see them just sitting there on the top on, the, on their side they almost look like you know a flounder just sitting up there or even a piece of seaweed because they'll just be floating there in the, in the water uh, but that's the time where you can spin that boat around get yourself locked down or drift past it throw a shrimp up there good to go the last thing i want to talk about with triple tail is their anatomy you know, this is the type of fish that has extremely sharp gill plates. They're, all of their fins are sharp as all get out and you will get cut. I think every time I've tried to pick one up, I end up getting cut one way or another. So keep some hand sanitizer on board just to keep your hands uh, clean of bacteria after you get cut, because most likely you will. Um, you know, keep a towel nearby to grab them with. That's always a good uh, suggestion as well. And just be careful when you're trying to stick your finger up the gill to hold them because they are as sharp as razors. Um, so, you know, it's a beautiful fish, tons of fun to catch. If you like eating, that's the best fish to eat, pretty much hands down. And the amount of meat you get off of a filet is completely unbelievable. So, you guys, get out there, give this thing a try. It's a lot of fun. Go find some crab buoys. You know, you'll have a blast with them.